Have you ever wondered if a divine being could change its mind? What if I told you that an event so shocking and so profound could have transformed the very essence of God himself? Today, we delve into the mysterious concept of God's ego death, a pivotal moment that might have reshaped divine justice as we know it, starting at the ancient gates of the Old Testament. So grab your popcorn because this is going to be a wild ride. Ego death in spiritual and psychological realms typically refers to the loss of self-identity, a dissolution of the ego where an individual experiences a profound connection with the broader universe. What if we apply this concept to God himself? This theory proposes that God, at a point in biblical history, experienced an ego death, transforming his interactions with humanity from judgment to grace. In religious discourse, the concept of God's ego death emerges as a fascinating alternative solution aimed at addressing the apparent discrepancies in the portrayal of divinity in the scriptures. This theory serves as a theological bridge, reconciling the stark differences in the rhetoric and actions attributed to Elohim in the Old Testament and those ascribed to Christ in the New Testament. Labeling this theory as biblical fan fiction or headcanon, similar to terms used in modern cultural discussions of literature and film, allows us to explore these biblical themes in a non-traditional light. By examining God's ego death, we delve into a transformative event within the divine narrative that attempts to explain why the God of the Old Testament, who once flooded the entire world due to humanity's sins, could transform into the forgiving and sacrificial figure of Christ in the New Testament. This perspective not only enriches our understanding of biblical texts, but also encourages a dynamic and evolving relationship with these ancient writings, much as any passionate fan would engage with their favorite stories. In the Old Testament, we encounter a God of might and wrath, exemplified in events like Noah's flood and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The New Testament introduces us to Christ's message of love and forgiveness. How do we reconcile these seemingly contradictory natures of divinity? The idea here is that the Old Testament God underwent a profound transformation, an ego death, that resulted in the loving nature of Christ. In the intriguing Gospel of Judas and other Gnostic texts, a profound and complex theology unfolds, suggesting a radical reinterpretation of traditional Christian beliefs. Gnosticism introduces the concept of the Demiurge, Yaldabaoth, a lesser God, who emerges from this discourse highlighting significant disparities between the depictions of divinity in the Old and New Testaments. This concept posits that the Old Testament God was actually the Demiurge, who, in his ignorance, believed himself to be the supreme deity due to his role as the creator of the universe. Contrarily, Gnosticism teaches that the true supreme God, who later sent Christ to humanity, originated from an ethereal, infinite void known as Sophia, In the biblical narrative, the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are emblematic of divine judgment against rampant sin. These cities, according to scripture, were mired in behaviors deemed exceedingly grievous, setting the stage for a dramatic demonstration of God's wrath paired with his mercy. At the heart of this story is the patriarch Abraham, who intervenes with a plea for mercy on behalf of these cities. He negotiates with God suggesting that if 10 righteous people could be found within the city limits, the entire area should be spared from destruction. This negotiation highlights the biblical themes of righteousness and divine judgment, encapsulating the tension between mercy and justice. Despite Abraham's intercession, the situation in Sodom and Gomorrah deteriorates when two angels, sent by God to assess the moral state of these cities, arrive. These angels are met with hostility and severe moral depravity, a group of sodomites attempts to assault them. This act of aggression seals the fate of the cities, leading to their ultimate destruction by fire and brimstone. This episode not only underscores the severity of the sins, but also serves as a critical point of reflection on the nature of divine intervention and judgment. It challenges us to consider the depths of wickedness that provoke divine action and the complex interplay of justice and mercy in biblical theology. A theory was explored that delves into one of the most controversial and enigmatic narratives found in the book of Genesis. The focus is on a distressing incident in Sodom and Gomorrah, as described in Genesis 19. 
1995, where the inhabitants of these cities exhibited extreme moral degradation. According to the account, the citizens surrounded Lot's house, demanding to engage in sensual acts with two visitors, who were, in fact, angels. This unsettling scene raises profound questions about the nature of the events and their depiction in biblical texts. Some scholars and theologians propose that the original incident was even more severe than what is commonly read in today's versions of the Bible. They suggest that these angels were not merely threatened, but were actually violated by the mob. This perspective argues that such a drastic event was downplayed or sanitized in later compilations of the biblical text to soften its impact and moral complexity. The concept of God's ego death ties into this interpretation, suggesting a transformative shift in the divine character's representation from the Old to the New Testament. Proponents of this theory believe that witnessing or experiencing such profound wickedness firsthand could have been a catalyst for a significant metamorphosis in the divine consciousness, a shift from judgment to mercy, from retribution to redemption. The Bible presents a God who undergoes significant changes in behavior and interaction with humanity. In the Old Testament, God's actions are sometimes severe, from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah to the Great Flood. However, the arrival of Jesus in the New Testament marks a shift toward a message of forgiveness and unconditional love. Could this be a divine form of ego death, where God transitions from a state of harsh judgment to one of compassion and mercy? The theory surrounding the catastrophic events of Sodom and Gomorrah delves deep into the nature of God's interactions with humanity. Some scholars propose a fascinating twist. What if the angels who descended upon these sinful cities were actually manifestations of God himself? Genesis 18.20 21 presents God declaring his intent to investigate the cities firsthand, indicating a direct involvement in the mission. This sentiment is echoed in Genesis 18.33 where Moses records God's departure towards the two kingdoms after conversing with Abraham. Proponents of this theory suggest that God, having previously manifested physically in encounters like Jacob's wrestling match, could have taken on the form of these angels. This perspective offers a profound reinterpretation of divine intervention, suggesting a God deeply involved in the human experience. In the biblical narrative, angels are depicted over a hundred times, However, there is a particular instance that stands out and offers a compelling hint at a deeper divine presence. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah, as recounted, features angels who wield a power quite uncommon to their kind, the ability to blind. In this account, the angels visit the two cities to assess the wickedness reported to God. Encountering a boisterous crowd that demands immoral acts, these angels respond by blinding the crowd a power notably rare among angelic actions documented throughout the scriptures. This singular occurrence in the Bible raises intriguing questions about the identity and nature of these angels. Typically, angels do not possess the ability to blind individuals. This power is reserved for manifestations of God himself. A parallel can be drawn with another scriptural event involving blindness, the conversion of Saul, a persecutor of Christians. In the book of Acts, specifically chapter 9, verse 8, Saul is miraculously blinded by Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate. The act of blinding Saul, who later becomes Paul, is significant as it marks a pivotal transformation and is direct divine intervention. The implication here is profound. If angels generally do not demonstrate the capacity to blind, yet these angels did. And Jesus, God in the flesh, also blinded Saul as a form of divine intervention, it suggests that the angels at Sodom and Gomorrah might have been more than mere messengers. They could have been manifestations of God himself, employing a form of divine power typically not available to angelic beings. This analysis not only highlights a unique instance in which divine capabilities are exercised by angels, but also aligns with the theological assertion that Jesus is God, possessing all divine powers, including that of causing blindness. Reflecting on the catastrophic events of Sodom and Gomorrah and the profound intercessions of Abraham pleading for mercy, one could hypothesize that these narratives symbolize critical moments of self-realization and transformation for God. Was it possible that witnessing the outcomes of his actions or the pleas of a righteous man like Abraham led to a re-evaluation of his approach to humanity? 
The traumatic events at Sodom and Gomorrah as a potential trigger for divine ego death. According to Genesis, God decides to personally investigate the grievous sins of these cities. Some scholars suggest that God manifested as the angels who visited these cities, experiencing firsthand the sins of humanity. The horrifying actions against these divine messengers could have been the catalyst for a transformation in God's approach to humanity. Jesus' teachings and actions represent a dramatic pivot towards love, forgiveness, and humility. Could the incarnation of Jesus be viewed as the ultimate manifestation of God's ego death? This perspective aligns with the idea that Jesus' ministry was not just about saving humanity, but also about demonstrating a new way for divinity to engage with the world, marked by empathy rather than retribution. The concept of Jesus' ego death invites us to reconsider the narrative arc of the Bible and the nature of divine transformation. It challenges us to view the scriptures not just as historical documents or moral guides, but as dynamic reflections of divine evolution and spiritual depth. This theory impacts our understanding of divine justice and mercy. If God can undergo such a profound change, what does this say about the nature of the divine? It suggests a God who evolves and adapts, who participates in the human experience to the extent of changing his own nature. According to this theory, the traditional view of an unchanging, perpetually stern God does not fully align with the narratives presented in the scriptures. Instead, it supports the notion of a God who evolves and reacts emotionally to human actions, which is a stark contrast to the more static depiction of deity typically taught in mainstream religious teachings. There are, of course, other interpretations surrounding the idea of God's transformation. Some propose that humanity itself represents God's ego death, drawing parallels to mythological concepts like Azathoth, where the cessation of the self leads to becoming one with God. Such interpretations delve into areas often associated with New Age occultism and esoteric thought. These are intriguing but tend to divert from traditional theological discussions, being more speculative and less grounded in the scriptural analysis. Despite the various interpretations available, the hypothesis that God experienced an ego death as a result of his encounters with human immorality at Sodom and Gomorrah remains a particularly poignant explanation. It challenges us to reconsider our understanding of divine omnipotence and justice, suggesting that God's interactions in the Old Testament might reflect a journey towards the embodiment of grace and mercy highlighted in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. In conclusion, while God's ego death may appear as a radical reinterpretation of traditional biblical theology, it provides rich food for thought and a basis for vibrant discussion among scholars, theologians, and laypersons. As we continue to explore these profound themes, it is essential to approach them with open minds and a spirit of thoughtful inquiry. God's ego death is more than a theory. It's a perspective that invites us to see the Bible as a dynamic narrative of God's evolution. It challenges us to rethink the divine character, offering a more relatable and profoundly compassionate view of God. Thank you for joining us on this thought-provoking journey through theology and mysticism. Like and subscribe for more insightful explorations into the complex intersections of faith, history, and more thought-provoking content. What are your thoughts on the concept of divine ego death? Share your views in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon for awesome digital arts and wallpapers.